We have entered the octave day of Easter. In the church, we celebrate the day itself for eight days, and then a total of 50 days in the Easter season. I love being a Catholic. I mean, the other people have put the plastic eggs in the baskets and all that away, and we continue to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh. And today in our gospel, we have this resurrection account, and Jesus appears in that upper room that I preached about last week, a very important room in Christianity, a room where four of the seven sacraments have their foundation. And we hear about one of them being instituted in this in our hearing. Jesus appears to the disciples in the locked room and he says, peace be with you. Why would he say that as his first words? Well, because they ran off when he needed them the most. His disciples, his apostles ran off. Peace be with you. Says it twice, receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven. And they are in utter amazement. Jesus is risen from the dead. So for some reason, Thomas isn't with them. Maybe he's out buying food. But they were in that room for fear because they, are, they were afraid they were going to be crucified as well. But whenever Thomas comes back, they tell him, we've seen Jesus. He is not dead. He's alive. I won't believe it until I see it for myself, until I put my finger in the nail marks and the wound in his side where I can see the scars for myself. Thomas gets kind of a bad rap for this, even to the present day. Within Christianity, and I assume maybe outside of Christianity, when somebody is called a doubting Thomas, this is what we're talking about. And Thomas is a pretty good apostle. And I have some friends who have the baptismal name of Thomas and take that very seriously. One of them is Father Thomas Bennett, the dean of this particular part of the diocese. He's over here at Queen of Peace. He really, I think, celebrates his namesake. And then Father Thomas, Father, Father Bishop Thomas Olmsted. He is a man who is plugged into his patron saint. And whenever I go into the reliquarium chapel in teens, we do have a first-class relic of St. Thomas. When I pass by the relic of St. Thomas, I try to remember to pray for Bishop Thomas Olmsted and my friend Father Thomas Bennett. Thomas is there, and Jesus appears, and he says, Now, enough of this. He knows what's going on. Okay, see for yourself that it is I, and I'm not a ghost. Touch my hands, touch the wounds, touch the scars, and see that it is I, and stop this unbelief. Put your hand in my side where I was pierced. And Thomas, after he sees what he needs to see, falls down, and he says that he gives that Christological confession in Spanish, Señor mío y Dios mío. And why do I say that? Because when I've been privileged to go to Mass in Latin America, places like Mexico and Guatemala, during the elevation of the respective elements at the consecration, the people say out loud, Señor mío y Dios mío, my Lord and my God. It touches my heart. It touches my heart. He makes that confession. Oftentimes on this Sunday I preach about scars. Usually, in reference to the Lord, because he says, you will be like me. What they've done to me, they will do to you. And where are your scars? But what the Lord has been speaking to me in these few weeks, these last few weeks of Lent, is, do you see their scars? Do you see their scars? I was visiting someone recently who's been sick for two years. And we sat, she's a woman of faith, and she reflected on her battle with illness. And she talked about suffering and the cross and 
how God tailor makes these things for each and every one of us. And I'm telling her, yeah, you're right. I don't like it, but you're right. And I remember that liturgy just not long ago, last week, when we venerated the cross. And Father Shea celebrated that liturgy. And one by one, the people come up and they venerate the cross. And I'm over there and I'm saying to myself, Lord, Lord what am I supposed to be doing right now? And it's funny because I do believe that I've celebrated that liturgy as the principal celebrant since I got here. So Father Charlie, let me do that. So I let Father Shea do that. So it's like, Lord, what am I supposed to be doing right now? He didn't speak to me in terms uh, that like this, but essentially he said, do you see their scars? One by one, the people would come up and some of you, I, I, I know some of your story because you've allowed me to walk this journey with you. And you're like, wow, he just lost his daughter. She went through a painful divorce. Her husband died last summer. This one is suffering because their child is out living a very sordid life. And even teens, knowing some of their stories and saying this one lost his or her friend because they're trying to walk the road with Jesus. See the scars that they bear for love of me, Jesus would say. See their scars. Yesterday I was at the funeral of a priest that died in a very unusual way. He was going to adoration at a parish church and he pulled in and he was he got out to walk over there and he fell. I don't know if he had low blood sugar. He was in his mid 70s, but he fell and he hit his head very seriously. And the people in the office came out and they said, Father has fallen and he's a retired priest. And the pastor there uh, went, went to the hospital with him, gave him the last sacraments and they told the pastor, it's very bad. It doesn't look like he's going to make it. And he did not. And I know in previous months that he had suffered from illness. Do you see the scars? And I ran into somebody last week. I've never known this woman before she wound up wheelchair bound. But she's in a motorized wheelchair. And I don't know what the condition is, but it seems like her ability to move is becoming less and less. I don't understand it, but she's always in a good mood, smiling, joyful to see others. Do you see their scars? I visited a woman in the hospital, well, she's in nursing care and has been for, for a long time. And I had another kind of emergency sick call and I said, sorry, I can't spend as much time as I would like with you. And, no problem, Father. I said, I'm gonna give you a quick anointing and Holy Communion, then I'm gonna be on my way. And she's always so pleasant. And it's like, you have every reason not to be. Do you see their scars? And then last week, we heard about those bombings in Sri Lanka. And those Christians that gathered to pray, persecuted Christians, because they are a minority there. And I even saw a video last night, a surveillance video from security cameras that may have identified one of the perpetrators wearing a backpack, walking through the streets. And he even had the wherewithal to pat a little kid on the head before he went into the church. And they showed him enter the church and the people were seated as you are now. I don't know what part of the liturgy they were in, but he kind of worked his way up to the front and then that's the last scene from the video because I guess that's when the explosion took place. And to see that image of the resurrected Jesus as a statue, and it was in the paper, I thought that it was, it was peppered with shrapnel. 
because the resolution in the paper that I received was, was not good. But Father Kurt Pereira had posted a photo that was better. It was the blood of the Christians that came there to worship. Not, they were not Easter worshipers. They are worshipers of the Lord Jesus Christ on Easter Day. Then I heard, heard this morning about a shooting in a synagogue in California. Do you see their scars? And we all have that tailor-made cross or those tailor-made scars like that woman told me. How do we deal with it? How do we navigate these waters? Sometimes I'm mystified by this. And I remember Fulton Sheen saying many decades ago, when you love, you can endure anything. And I had a conversation with the medical doctor uh, that I'd never met before in recent weeks. And she gave me some information that I'm going to amend that statement of Fulton Sheen. She said that the response, that maybe even the antidote for all of this is allowing the love of God to penetrate our hearts. To allow the love of God to come in, to accept the love of God. Realizing, she said, that we are unconditionally loved. And to accept that. I don't know about you, friends, I have a hard time with that. Because I got a little something in my head that says, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. You got to work harder. You got to be smarter. You got to do this. You got to do that. And then maybe, maybe I'll like you. And that is such a lie. She said, allow the love of God in. This will dissipate all kinds of things, she said. Anxiety and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Allowing it in. So when you love, you can endure anything. When you know you are loved, you can endure anything. And know that you are loved by the Lord God himself. Unconditionally. Does he want to leave us in our present condition? No. No. He wants to pull us out of the muck. That's why sin makes no sense. Oh, we think, oh, and I've heard it again and again. And maybe, maybe these people are telling a factual account. But they say, oh, the Catholic Church, oh, they're so down on everything. They're just, I, the God that they transmitted to me is one that's just waiting to hit me over the head with a hammer every time I fell down. Like, well, maybe, maybe that's what was transmitted to you. I don't know. But if God is Father and he loves us as this doctor says that he does, and he does, it's we are children. And when we're going to get into trouble and they say, hey, son, don't touch that, you're going to get burnt, that isn't because he, he's mad and wants to knock us over the head. It's because he loves us. He wants to protect us. Señor mío y Dios mío. God loves us immensely. He sees our scars. He wants us to see each other's scars out of love for him. Friends, as we celebrate the sacred liturgy, as we see each element of the Holy Eucharist elevated after those words of consecration, we can say either internally or externally, my Lord and my God, my Lord and my God, Señor mío y Dios mío, I know that you love me. <laughs>